Hello and welcome back to today's video. So we're going to be having a quick look at this ordinary differential equation here. Now this might be a little bit different from any ODEs that you've seen before. This is more of a special case sort of problem. So let's dive right in. So the first thing that we're going to want to check with a problem like this is we're actually going to check the ratio of the coefficients of the x's and the y's. So let's say this is written out in the format such that we've got coefficients a1, b1, c1, and then over here coefficients a2, b2, c2. What we want to do now is we just want to check that a1 on a2, is that going to be equal to b1 on b2? Well, a1, the coefficient of x here is 1, a2 over here it's 2, okay? b1 is negative 2 and b2 is positive 1. So these are not equal. Okay, so now that they're not equal, that kind of locks in the method for which we'll be approaching this problem with. And so what we'll do now is we're going to actually use a little bit of a, a sort of a change in variable formula here. So we're going to say that x is equal to x, capital X, plus h, and y is equal to capital Y plus k. Okay, so let's now substitute those values into our ODE, into that problem, and let's see what we'll get now. So now we'll end up with x plus h minus 2y minus 2k, minus 3, and that's all in brackets, dx, plus, and again now, all in brackets, 2x, plus 2h, plus y, plus k, minus 1, dy is equal to 0. Okay, so what that now means for us is that, let's have a quick look over here. So ignoring the x and the y terms, we'll see that we must have h minus 2k minus 3 equal to 0. And we must also have over here 2h plus k minus 1 equals to 0. Okay, so now working with these equations here, we'll end up with h minus 2k equals 3. Let's call that equation 1. And then from this equation over here, we'll end up with 2h plus k equals 1. And that's going to be our second equation there. Okay, so now we're just solving simultaneous equations. We'll say that equation 1 plus two lots of equation 2. What will we get now? Well, that will end up just giving us the result that 5h is going to be equal to 5. And so we can say, therefore, h is equal to 1. And that will allow us to deduce that k is equal to negative 1. Okay, so now... It's probably a bit weird, considering we, for our normal ordinary differential equations, you normally have like an integrating factor or a characteristic equation to solve. And this is a very different sort of procedure here. So now we've got our h and our k values. We're going to go back and replace those back into the, again, that original expression that we had. So what we see it will become now is x plus h, which was 1, minus 2y minus 2k, so that will now become plus 2, minus 3, that's dx, plus, the other bracket, 2x, plus 2h, so that's just going to become plus 2, plus y, plus k, so that will become minus 1, and then that minus 1 as well, dy equals 0. And well, now, because of our design, we see that h and k will end up helping us eliminate all the numerics inside these brackets here. So what we're left over with is a much nicer looking problem of x minus 2y dx plus 2x plus y dy equals 0. Okay, and really quickly, we might just go back and refer to our dx dy's, and I just want to show you really quick. So from our definition that we had over here, I could say that, well, dx on d capital X is going to be equal to 1. Hopefully you can see that. So I can therefore conclude that d lowercase x is equal to uh, d capital X. And I can say the exact same thing for dy, d capital Y. So let's just write that out a little bit more clearly as well. Okay, excellent. So we've got that. So what that means we can do now is just replace these ones over here. 
as D capital X and D capital Y. Okay, fantastic. So we probably want to try and get this into the form of dy dx. So to do that, what I think we should do is probably, let's say we'll subtract this term to the other side. So that way we can then divide by dx and then we'll be able to divide by this 2x plus y term there. Okay, and so when we do that, we see that we'll be left with dy dx is going to be equal to, so 2y minus x all over 2x plus y. Okay, and if you need a moment to quickly figure that out, again, so just subtract this term to the other side, then you're going to divide dx across both sides, and then you'll be dividing by this bracketed term here, and that's why we see that now on the denominator there. Okay, so that's all that's happened here. All right, so now moving forward, so now we've got dy dx, but we've got 2y minus x on the top and 2x plus y on the bottom, which again isn't too easy for us to work with. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to do a very, very cheeky technique. We're going to say let y be equal to v, which is some function of x, times by capital X. Okay, and so just for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to write this as vx. So I'll ignore the fact that this is v of x, and I'll just write it as vx. All right, so now let's have a quick think about what this will help us do. So that means that I can now rewrite this with v is equal to y over x. Okay, so now getting a little bit off topic here, or so it seems. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to divide by x over x, as that's the same thing as dividing by 1, which we know we are allowed to do. And so let's see what happens when I do that. How will this problem change? Now we'll end up with dy dx is going to be equal to 2y over x minus, well, x on x is 1, all over 2x on x is 1, so it just becomes 2 plus y over x. Okay, and now we're going to use the fact that our v term is equal to y over x. So let's now chuck that in and see what we're left with. So now we'll have dy on dx is equal to 2v minus 1 over 2 plus v. Whew. Okay, and so that doesn't look like it's too helpful because we've got dy dx and we've got our right-hand side in terms of v, which isn't necessarily too helpful here. But what we can do is we can quickly look back at our definition for y is equal to v of x times by x, and we can then just find dy dx and see what that'll become in terms of V and capital X. So let me make that a little bit more clear. So we'll have dy dx, d capital X I should say, is now going to be equal to, so product rule of V of X and X here. So that means that now we'll end up with X dV dx plus V dx dx. And so dx dx obviously just disappears and that becomes a 1. And so we see that instead of writing dy dx, now we can rewrite that as x dv dx plus v. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And again, I promise you this will make things simpler. It might not look like it right now, but I assure you it will get there. So now our problem becomes x dv dx plus v is equal to 2v minus 1 over 2 plus v. Okay, fantastic. So we're definitely getting somewhere. So next step, let's just continue simplifying and see what we can do here. So let's say we'll subtract v from both sides. Well, what happens then? So we'll end up with, again, we'll leave that as x dv dx for now. And we'll say that will now become, let's see, 2v minus 1 over 2 plus v. And now to subtract the v, we need to make sure that it has the same numerator and denominator. So we're just going to extend that denominator and then we'll add a 2 plus v attached to that v term there. Okay, so now let's quickly expand that. What do we have? We'll have 2v minus 1 minus 2v minus v squared. So that will end up with a minus 1 minus v squared on our numerator. Our denominator becomes still 2 plus v. Okay, so now again, Let's see what we can do to start figuring things out. So we can now 
start looking at things by having a separation of variables. So we'll end up with all the X's on the left and all the V's on the right. So if I want to get DV to the right hand side, probably the best way for us to do that is I'll just quickly flip both fractions. So both sides of this equation here, and that's probably going to be the easiest technique for us to now use. So if we flip both of these, let's see what we'll end up with. We'll end up with dx on the numerator over x dv is going to be equal to 2 plus v over minus 1 minus v squared. Okay, so now let's just bring that dv up to the other side. And now we'll end up with dx on x is equal to 2 plus v over minus 1 minus v squared dv. Okay, so now it's looking a lot more approachable for us. So one last thing I would quickly do just whilst we're on the topic of simplifying this right-hand side is I'd probably bring that negative out from the denominator and I'd bring that up to the numerator just to make things a little bit easier later on. So what that'll do is we'll just change it to minus two minus V in our numerator and one plus V squared in our denominator. Okay, so now we can actually start integrating. So finally, we are at that stage. So integral of one over x, well, that will just become the natural log of capital X here. And that is gonna be equal to, well, let's see, the integral of minus two minus V over one plus V squared dV. What will that become? Well, let's just quickly replace that as two separate fractions here. So the integral of minus two over 1 plus v squared minus v over 1 plus v squared, and I should put my integral sign there as well, and that'll be dv, dv there as well. Okay, so now quickly integrating both of these, let's see what we get. So we'll end up with the integral of minus 2 over 1 plus v squared. Well, we see that's actually just going to be a trigonometric integration, so that will end up actually just giving us a minus 2, tan inverse, some might write arctan of v, and now minusing. So we notice that on the top we've got v, which looks like the derivative of our denominator of 1 plus v squared, but we know that they're just missing a factor of 2 here. So what I actually need to do is I actually need to take out a factor of a half, and then I can say that this is equal now to the natural logarithm of that denominator, so v squared plus 1. And then, of course, we'll just chuck our plus C term on the end there. Okay, so we are practically there. So now we've got our natural logarithm of capital X is equal to minus 2 times tan inverse of V minus half the natural logarithm of V squared plus 1 plus C. Okay, so what we need to remember now is just a few different things. So we need to remember, first of all, what was our X equal to? Well, we had that X was equal to lowercase x minus h, and h was equal to 1, so x minus 1 here. And for y, for capital Y we should say, that will similarly end up being equal to lowercase y plus 1. And so that means now that v, which was equal to y over x, is now going to be equal to y plus 1 over x minus 1. All right, so let's start working out this problem here and see how we can simplify it. It is acceptable to leave it in this form and just quickly make those substitutions for your x and v terms, and that's fine, but it's probably not the neatest way we can finish our expression here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to bring everything to the left-hand side, so that way we're working with positives only. And then I'm also going to multiply by a factor of 2, just to get rid of that half from that denominator there. Okay, so what we'll end up with now is 2 times the natural log of x plus, and now I'll write that logarithm here as well, the natural log of v squared plus 1, plus 2 tan inverse of v plus c equals 0. Okay, so now what we notice is, first of all, real quick, log laws. So a 2 out the front of the natural logarithm of x, that means I can rewrite that as the natural log of x squared, and now let's quickly think about, well, we're adding two logarithms, both that have the same base of e, so that what that means for us now is that we can actually combine those into the one logarithm and just multiply their arguments together. So that's now going to look like the natural logarithm of v squared plus 1 times by 
x squared, and then we'll have still that plus 2 tan inverse of v plus c equals 0. Okay, so now let's quickly remember what are our x and v's equal to. So v, first of all, is equal to y on x. So I'm going to go ahead and just quickly rewrite in here that that will end up becoming y squared on x squared. And so now hopefully you can see that when we expand these brackets out, that x squared will end up cancelling with that x squared over there. And so what we're left with is the natural logarithm of y squared plus x squared plus 2 tan inverse of v. And again, I'll quickly rewrite that now as just y over x plus c equals 0. And now our last step here is to quickly rewrite that again in terms of our original variables, lowercase x and lowercase y. Okay, so that will now become the natural logarithm of, and now time for our final answer, the natural logarithm of x squared plus y squared minus 2x plus 2y plus 2. Close that bracket off. And then I've just noticed that I forgot to multiply that factor of outside the front of tan by 2 when we multiply it across. So that will actually end up becoming a 4 there, a 4 there, a 4 here, and now plus 4 tan inverse of y, which was y plus 1 over x minus 1 plus c equals 0. Okay, so there's only one more way that we can simplify this, and this depends on what your domain is and what you're working with here. But we might be able to say that we can take the natural logarithm of some constant c, and it will still remain some constant. Since we don't know what that is, it doesn't really matter right now. And so if I take the natural logarithm of c, and I rewrite it now as the natural log of c, what that means I can do is once again apply our log laws. And so what I can now write for our very final answer here is going to be the natural logarithm of some constant c out in the front of x squared plus y squared minus 2x plus 2y plus 2, close those brackets off, plus 4 tan inverse of y plus 1 over x minus 1 equals 0. Oh, and there we go. So that is a hell of a problem. Uh, it does take quite a little bit of time, especially when you go through and try and explain every single step as we've tried to do today. And hopefully you've learned something new. And if you have enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe and comment. I really do appreciate it. And you can see exactly how much work we've put in to go from our original problem here all the way down through our various techniques of simplifying and changing those parameters here and then integrating. And there we are at our very final step and our final solution here. So as I said, if you have enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, comment. Let me know if you have any other methods that you would have approached this problem with. I'd love to hear about it in the comments down below. And as always, stay curious.